Right now, some of us are being forced to change direction. Whether it's with our careers, whether it's with our family, our loved ones, we have to reevaluate the path that we're on and potentially change our direction. Changing direction is difficult and it's scary. Currently, our GPS is set. The voice navigation tells us to turn left and turn right. We have a little green thumbtack that shows us our final stop. And all we need to do is listen to the voice navigation. We don't have to think about it. It's gonna tell us where we're going because we already have that path set. What happens when your internal GPS gets scrambled? All of a sudden, there's no voice telling you to turn left or turn right. You're lost. Our next guest knows exactly how it feels to have your GPS scrambled. He was on a path as a civil engineer in Iraq where he defused bombs until one explosion changed his life and his direction forever. I am so honored to have Jim Dukes on our show this week. He is a superhero. I am so grateful for his service and I'm so grateful that he discovered the artist within. Hey, Jim. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm oh, fantastic. I am so excited to have you on Loving the Artist Within series this week. So for those that don't know you, can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, I am um, originally from Cary, North Carolina, and a um, uh, degree in civil engineering and um, spent four years um, working for the UN uh, disarming bombs and clearing minefields. Um, got back into engineering and several uh, brain injuries and um, uh, blind in one eye, deaf in one ear, and kind of got me into the arts and raising uh, my son, uh, Caden, who's 11, who is into everything and from art and school and uh, everything in between. Awesome. Wow. You win and disarming bombs yep. mm -hmm. and brain injuries and oh my gosh how has life changed since that i'm not the same person as i used to be definitely um personality has changed with the the brain injuries um six years ago i had to learn to walk and talk and read again after my last uh, brain injury. And um, so all that technical, analytical engineering mind stopped working. Um, and the right brain uh, really started to blossom. And I've uh, been in therapy uh, for, uh, let's see, I got sober 14 years ago. I uh, got into therapy immediately after that. Um, have been working on my stuff ever since. And um, so while I was going through uh, therapy uh, during my rehab time, you know, I really had to make the choice of, was I gonna be a disabled man or a man with a disability? And those are two different life paths, you know, sit on the couch and take meds or do something with myself. So, um, so I chose the arts, I chose, um things that made sense to my brain you know math and reading don't and um but taking pictures uh, and working with images do excellent so was that when you first discovered the artist within and oh yeah so tell us about that realization when you started to not only discover the artist within but you had to learn to love that artist within because I'm sure it was a different from what you were used to. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was, um, art was not even on my radar and, um, you know, I was trained to see all the things in the world around me that could kill me. And so, um, that's how I view life. And 
so through therapy and being hypervigilant and um, uh, just always on alert, um, deciding to get involved with art um, through uh, watching a, a fundraising um, concert um, for veterans. Um, I was living at home doing all my rehab and I was broke and I, I can't sing or dance or play an instrument, but I, I realized I had a cell phone and it had a camera. And so I just started taking pictures and it allowed me to see, um, take that, apply that hypervigilance to the world around me and search for the beauty through that lens, as opposed to all the things that could kill me. And so I just shifted the way I thought about life. And so it helped me not only um, like a emotional therapy, but uh, rewire some, syn um, some synapses and um, yeah, help with some of my brain recovery as well. So how has life been since that shift, since that, you know, learning to love the artist within, how has life changed? Well, I don't like the artist within, really. I think everything I do sucks, and um, I'm not happy with it at all. And I have, I have like body dysmorphia when it comes to art, because nothing I think I don't think anything that I do looks good. And um, so, I, I guess I'm just constantly on a quest to improve and be better, um, but it's helped me find a purpose in life and it's helped me um, help others and it's um, helped me heal and um, find patience and uh, connect with other people that are in similar um, situations and cases and allowed me to learn to teach other people to use art as a healing outlet as well. So you may not like your artist all the time, but your artist has this really amazing perspective and you've taken that and you've shifted it to helping others mm -hmm. heal through the arts mm -hmm. and perhaps love the artist in themselves. Yes. So tell us about your healing arts project. Um, so Healing art um, programs were starting now at um, Charlotte Art League are for um, veterans and older adults and trauma survivors. Um, those are all groups that I've worked with in the past, um, past six years. And um, so it's a, it's a non-therapeutic way of facilitating communication between people that have shared experiences. It's the easiest way to put it. It's a way to build community and open conversation and um, connect while creating a piece of art. With, and it's not, a, not necessarily painting every time, but it um, could be collaging. It's, just, it's, a, it's a, a form of self-exploration and um, discovery and, and connection, not only with um, strangers but with your own family so it's it's more powerful than than you think i spent a lot of time teaching it from kids to um hardened drill sergeants and everybody comes away with the aha moment of wow i did that or i was able to express that and classes usually start quiet nobody talks sunglasses on or everybody's all cross-armed and bound up but usually by the end of the of a two-hour workshop doesn't matter who what who it is nobody's i can't get anybody to stop talking but yeah it's it's a great transformation and it's it's what we love so this series loving the artist within is is kind of on that same vein is finding that transformation and um yeah we might not like the artists that that's in us we might not like what we're doing but it's something that just has to be expressed or else we're going to wither or s throw a tantrum or some we're going to emote in some ways right it's better that we emote 
in an artistic medium. Safe, safe way, yeah. In a safe way. Mm -hmm. So during your healing the arts pro healing through the arts project, um, what's been one of the most significant shifts or transformations that you've seen? I have one story. Um, I'll, I'll share real quick if I can boil it down real quick. It was a couples class. Vietnam veterans um, had a. It was the first time that they had come to my workshop, and they um, had it all planned out. So one couple came in, and he just grabbed a canvas and he and he um, some paint, and he went and sat down at a table, and his wife got a magazine and. And he didn't, they didn't listen to me. They didn't follow anything I did. They just talked to each other and leaned in and, and you know, whispered to each other. And he was painting and didn't pay a bit of attention. And so I got everybody rolling. And then I eventually went and sat down with them and talked. And come to find out, they got married right before he shipped off to Vietnam. And they've been together ever since. And um, she was just reading a magazine as he was painting flowers and leaves from memory and um, come to find out he had survived Hamburger Hill, which was one of the bloodiest battles in Vietnam. And um, he said, you know, I've been a wrench turner and a welder my whole life. And this is the most peace I've ever felt since I've been back from Vietnam. And so every time they come to the workshop, he just he would just come up, grab his canvas and paint, and she'd get a magazine, and they'd sit at the table by themselves, and then he'd just talk and connect, and he'd paint flowers and leaves, and and he just he found his outlet and his and his peace, and um, I was just happy to be there for him. Wow, that's amazing. That's so amazing. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna see some an art project that you did. Can you kind of talk us through this art project? All right. So I struggle with PTSD still and a lot of um, trauma from uh, combat and from uh, my time in Iraq and um, my blast injuries. And so I struggled and COVID has helped uh, with that triggering. Um, so I had a bad um, flashback uh, one night and um, uh, a lot of people experience things a lot of different ways, but I had, uh, it was a Saturday. Um, some people can relate to, you know, like, you know, thrashing around, hit their spouse, destroying side tables, you know, destroying the bed or for whatever. But I ripped literally a handful and ripped my sheets. And um, I woke up the next day and I was just struck with all of this pain and um, grit in my mouth from sand and heat and the fear and all these emotions. And um, so I, I spent the day on and off crying and um, uh, decided to make an art piece about that and um, about um, death and loss and secrets and um things that couldn't help happen and um it just flowed out of me um, um through over several days so very cathartic i like to do abstract uh, so i started with uh, just um, watercolor paper with random lines and then uh some shapes and then i painted some watercolors dripped some uh, food coloring on it and messed with the food coloring uh did a background mm, car, a black background and then i took all of the the individual pieces when they're dried and i ripped them all up i shredded them i um pieced them back together in, a, in an order that made sense to me and um then i added words and phrases that helped heal and um i'm still working on a title uh, but it these feelings and emotions go to this dark place and they flow there on the canvas and um i don't know if they stay there if they leave there if they're held there i haven't decided yet but um but uh it helped for for now
Holy cow. That is beautiful. It really is. So you went from the UN, civil mm -hmm. engineer, mm -hmm. in combat, diffusing bombs and mines, to photography, mm -hmm. to the healing arts, and now you're executive director of the Charlotte Art League. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. <laughs> That is quite a journey and just an amazing journey. Yeah, tell, yeah. Tell me about what's next. So, um, I don't know. I start, uh, you know, June 1st as executive director, um, Charlotte Art League. Um, when I started doing art, my thought was if I could, if I could help just one person with my art, I will have succeeded. Um, so I think I've already, I've already found success and, um, oh, I still do photography, still travel all over, still have clients. Um, um, I don't care about awards. I don't care about rules. I don't care about, I just want to be impactful and I want to encourage other people to be the same way and, um, find that spark inside them that allows them to, blaze a fire and not just something little but something big um, i think we're, we're all capable of something big bigger than we are and, and uh, you know if i can help facilitate that that's what i want to do it's amazing what do you think is your superpower patience mm, that's a good one without a doubt Patience is a good one. So tell me about um, the giving tree. Oh, the giving tree. Wow, that just came up out of nowhere, out of a conversation. I, I do a thing at Shara Art League called Think Tank Thursdays, where we just open the door to people that come in and give us ideas about what do they want to see? How can we improve? Um, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? I mean, it's, I mean, anyway, so it just morphed into this whole conversation about, hey, do you want to just build this 20, 30 foot paper mache tree here in the Charlotte Art League? And we can call it the giving tree. And then it, but it's a fundraiser for our healing art programs. And then rather than, you know, like people buy bricks to raise money, well, rather than doing that, we can have people upload a photo of them or their pet or a family member. And then we'll incorporate that into the final paper mache layer of the tree. And it's like the family tree of, that has helped us grow. And then we can illuminate the tree and then we can decorate it seasonally or let people hang art off of it or use it for selfies. And, you know, it's just blah, 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 blah. And just kept on going. She's like, yeah, yeah. And, um, so Erin started with, you know, doing a, a small five foot tree in her living room to um, having the confidence to be able to build a 30 foot tree at Charlotte Art League. And I was like, don't worry, we'll get it. We'll make it happen. I can totally have confidence in you and I will help you get this done. Go big. Done and everybody here will help you get this done and other artists I'm sure will pitch in and it'll be a great beautiful community collaborative project so yeah so how can people um help the Charlotte Art League and the hmm. arts program so uh if you go to our uh website um charlotteartleague.org you can um there's on the front landing page there is a um tree little box that says tree it says the giving tree you can click on that and it has the story and a link to the healing art programs descriptions and then the link to be able to donate online that's awesome yeah well thank you so so much for yeah. spending some time with us today and i love the fact that you say everybody has something huge inside of them that they just need to have faith and just step out and get it yep. done because yep. people can we burn do. bright. That's exactly right. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Amy. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I know things are 
really hard right now. Paths are being altered, directions are being changed, and we don't really know what's gonna happen next. But after hearing Jim, I have to think that everything is in divine order. Jim said that after he came back, after his path was exploded in front of him, he came back and he had to decide whether he was going to be a disabled man or a man with a disability. And I'm I'm so glad he chose the latter. And now he helps other veterans love the artist within through his Healing Arts Project, through the Charlotte Art League, where he's going to become executive director on June 1st. Please listen to Jim's TEDx talks and see everything that the Charlotte Art League has in store. Thank you so much.